Hello and welcome to The Archery Show. I'm Karen Bashir and joining me as ever, former world number one, Nikki Hunt. Uh, we're here uh, in Gwangju, South Korea for the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. First time a Hyundai Archery World Cup has been held here in Korea for 15 years. So it is a big competition. Before we crack into it though, let's uh, just take a little look back at the first stage that happened in Antalya, Turkey. Ella Gibson won the compound women's competition. The final four here doesn't include her. It's uh, Lizelle Yatmar and uh, Munoz Estonia versus Spain in the first semi-final and Mexico versus Korea in the second, Quintero and Kim Jun Hee. Nikki, let's get straight into it. Uh, final four here, who's your favourite? Gosh, I mean, there's a great lineup again as always. I mean, Yatma getting that bronze in Antalya, she's clearly on form, but Korean on home soil. Uh, will Kim actually make the, the gold here? It'd be great to see. Yeah, well, it really will. Uh, Mike Schlusser won in the Netherlands. So there's a name we hear <laughs> fairly regularly, and he's in the final four here as well. Uh, he goes up against Steve Marsh of the USA, a new name to me for sure. Uh, Nico Vena of Austria goes up against Bard Vaj of India in the other semi final. Can anyone beat Mike Schlusser <laughs> on the form he is at the moment? I mean, it just doesn't seem to be possible, does it? He's qualified consecutively the top uh, seed again here. It's just incredible, gold and Antalya as well, so he is certainly the one to beat. Yeah, he's an absolute machine, isn't he? Um, Bryony Pittman uh, broke through in, uh, uh, Bryony Brian Pittman of Great Britain, I should say, broke through in Antalya winning the Recurve Women's Competition. She's not here, but we are going to have a chat with her a little bit later on. A little spoiler there for you. Uh, but uh, it, it's Korea versus Chinese Taipei in both semi finals. Uh, Choi goes up against Kuo in the first one, and it's Lee against Chu in the second. There's a chance, of course, of an all Korean or all Chinese Taipei final. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, the Koreans are just so dominant, aren't they? I wouldn't be surprised if we see an all Korean final. Choi is just absolutely incredible herself. Already won three stages, so can she make it a fourth? Yeah, it, it, she she does she does look like she she is on fire here. She is on home soil. Is there an advantage? I think potentially there is, you know, just in terms of your know, normal food, you know, normal timings, things like that. So I think it does just no give jet you the lag. edge. Exactly. <laughs> no <laughs> travel, that's a, yeah. that's a big thing. Uh, okay, well, the, the last one to sum up then is that the men's competition, Miguel Alvarino <laughs> from Spain yeah. won in Antalya. Now, a lot of people out there, a lot of people a lot more knowledgeable than me, said that we wouldn't see him in a final four again. But he's, he's made it here. He's up against a, a tough opponent, another Korean, Lee Woo Suk, uh, in semi-final number one. It's Van der Ven of the Netherlands against Kim Woo Jin. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm going, well, Lee and Kim are likely to make the finals, but Alvarino, consistent. Yeah, he really is. I mean, he's come back, you know, he was informed back in 2015, seems so long ago, but came out and won Antalya and, and made the top final four again. So let's see what we can do. Again, I wouldn't be surprised for an all-Korean final, but two great contenders here. Rick van der Ven as well, uh, previously a fantastic archer, just missed out on Tokyo and also making his comeback. So two hungry archers to beat these two Koreans. Yeah, the, the, the talk has been about... Uh, this being the first competition in Korea, the first World Cup in Korea for 15 years. That is, is that a big thing? I mean, it's a huge sport in, in Korea. I guess at the moment, in current times, it might be a bigger thing because the Koreans haven't really been able to travel over the last couple of years. So you're actually having this full field of these amazing athletes where, you know, everyone's competing. So from that perspective, I think it, you know, we've been lacking that little bit over the last couple of years. And um, we've heard lots of stories about, uh, you know, the, we, we talked right here about the Koreans not having to, having to travel, so that's mm -hmm. a big advantage for them. Does it, make, does it give them an even bigger advantage because everyone else is having to travel just that, that, that little bit further? Yeah, I think it, it does certainly have an advantage because archery is uh, it's a skill sport, it's about concentration. So if you jet lag, that's really not going to help you. Um, so certainly an advantage there. Even things like, you know, your normal food that you're going to eat is quite different for other cultures, perhaps come into Korea. Um, so that can unsettle you a little bit as well. So they probably have a good home support as well. You mentioned how big this sport is in Korea. It's huge. So we'll probably see a big stadium full of people again, given that home advantage. Yeah, massive uh, advantage for them. Uh, look, we've talked about the Koreans, uh, but we've got a couple of uh, debutantes uh, performing in the top four here. Munoz and Quintero qualified for the final four in their discipline. 
Here's what they had to say shortly after qualification. Thank you so much, Karim. I'm here with Daphne Quintero of Mexico and Andrea Munoz of Spain. They just made it into the final four, and I just want to ask them a couple of questions. So tell me how you're feeling. Well, I don't have words to explain how I feel. That's so new for me. And how do you feel, Andrea? Um, it's my second World Cup, so I'm so excited. I didn't expect it. So, I mean, this is this is amazing. It's also your first World Cup, and both of you are both extremely young. I mean, you're you're 19 and you're 20, Daphne. So, do you think your age has an advantage against these these veterans that you just beat today? No, I think that is only training so many hours, and that's it. What do you think? Yeah, and I think that hey, they have a like more experience than uh, our, but we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that attitude, and you did do it today. Was there any moment that you were incredibly nervous today? Yeah, I was too nervous in the last arrow. Was like, oh, I'm gonna go to a final, but. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably executed that just fine. And how about you? Was there any moment where you felt exceptionally nervous, or how are you feeling? I think that in my first set, <laughs> I'm really nervous, but that's fine. All right. Well, we're looking forward to you both competing in the final four. Good luck. Good luck. And back to you, Karim. Thanks, Vanessa. Fascinating uh, interview there with two uh, debutants uh, making the final four here in Guangzhou. Nikki, I mean, it was a fascinating conversation. Youth versus experience. They're clearly very excited, both of them. Yeah, absolutely. In my opinion, I think being that young and being able to come out here, just stick to normal processes, I think there's almost an advantage in that because you don't have those kind of bad experiences in the back of your mind that mm. sometimes pop up, I think, when later on in your career. So I would say, yeah, possibly an advantage for them, but they've trained really hard to get here, um, so they deserve to be here. And I think it's okay to be nervous. You know, if you're not nervous, I think, well, you're probably doing the wrong thing. So they're nervous, they're full of energy, but it's how they're going to, you know, really target that in competition. And is there an element of a devil may care sort of attitude? They they've got nothing to lose, have they? Exactly. Yeah, nothing at all. I mean, they're not favourites, not coming in here with people, you know, asking them questions about, you know, are you going to do it again and that sort of thing, which you do get uh, with that experience. So, yeah, I think, you know, it doesn't matter either way for them. Go out there, enjoy the experience, learn what you can from it, come back stronger. Who's got the better chance? Munoz goes up against Yatma, who's in, in great form. Quintero goes up against Kim, who's shooting on home soil. Oh, it's such a hard question. I mean, Yatma is in form, got the bronze in Antalya. She's recently been out there in this stage. I think there's a lot to be said for that. But again, yeah. could that be played the other way? And oh, there's all the expectation and eyes on her. She's the only one to make the final four again. Uh, and then, yeah, Kim... Uh, She's just that little bit older, 28 years old, but she's a former world champion mm. back from 2015. But again, we know she's good at it. But having said that, she's never medalled on a World Cup stage before. So can she add this medal to her tally? Fascinating stuff here uh, in Guangzhou, Korea. Uh, we've got to go back to the Koreans. Nikki, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up here. I'm going to ask you... Uh, who your favourite Korean is. Uh, we're here in Korea, there's lots of Koreans in the final four, uh, but who is the greatest Korean of all time? Ooh, I need to say Kibobe. Kibobe is like uh, such a star, she's been like one of the best archers in the world, so I think that she's, she's my favourite one. Of all time, oh, I don't know. I think uh, it's between Kim Woo Jin and Oh Jin Yak. Um, yeah, I think I'll go with Oh Jin Yak for how long he's been around and that he's still here, right, despite retiring, I think, one or two times. Park Hyun Moo. Kibo Bae. Uh, I think Ansan. Lee Chang Hwan. Keep up, babe. It's like her person like personality. A bark. Oh, uh, definitely Kim Woo Jin. I think it's Kim Woo Jin with his 
uh, the first person who ever shot 700. Uh, sets an awesome score and yeah, he's he's on such a great level for so many years. Park Kyung Mo. I'm have, going to have to say Oh. Oh Jin Hyuk is definitely probably my favorite uh, Korean of all time. If I was going to pick one, I would say that Ansan's performance at the Olympics last year was pretty legendary, so I would say Ansan. A load of names there, a whole host of names. Uh, and it's superstars talking about uh, their favorite or the greatest Korean in their opinion. We've got another superstar right here, Nikki Hunt. Uh, Nikki. Um, a load of names, number one. Uh, but let's first off get it out, out of the way. Your your greatest Korean of all time? I think I'd go back that a little bit further. Uh, so Kim Soo Nyung, uh, you know, probably the best of the modern era. She picked up six Olympic medals, four gold, one silver, one bronze, over three Olympics. No mixed team round back then, remember. Yeah, and uh, well, the, the other thing, you, you, you're showing your age there by, by going back to uh, <laughs> so far. But no, but in all seriousness, there, there are a couple of great well more than a couple there's a few great Koreans still shooting in the final four here uh, Kim is Kim gonna get up there in that in that in those ranks Kim you Kim Woo Jin I mean possibly I mean there's just so many medals he's won already he's, uh, team medals in Rio and Tokyo but not individual so not in the same sort of league as Nyung so uh, I mean so many medals this Korean team have won and, and I think it's, it's worth highlighting, you know, we, of course, we are in Korea. This, 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 we have to talk about the Koreans. They're one of the greatest nations ever. Just making the team is, yeah. is a big ask. Yeah, you look at these Koreans and I think you mentioned earlier, oh, there's a dip of that one there or here. But a lot of the time that's because they, it was so difficult for them to make the team, yeah. uh, get on that Korean team. So that kind of explains why some of them have little dips in their career paths. Well, little dips in their career paths uh, for sure happened to uh, to most of the athletes out there. But he was mentioned a few times in that video. Uh, Kim Woo Jin is right up there and he's in the final four here. Hangsang,韩国에 어쨌든 뭐 장소가 어디가 됐든 간에 시합을 하는 건다 똑같다고 생각을 해요. 여기 있는 모든 선수들이 유능한 선수들이고 항상 한치 앞을 알수 없는 경기들이 이루어지기 때문에 항상 최선을 다하는 게 가장 적합한 거라고 생각해요. 누가 이렇게 가장 견제가 된다라고 말하기는 좀 나라 말하기는 좀 많이 힘들고요. 여기 철저한 모든 선수들이 또 각광받는 또 유명한 선수들도 많기 때문에 어, 누구가 이제 그렇다라고 뭐 단독적으로 말씀드리긴 좀뭐 오무한 것 같아요 그런 거는. 그래서 아무래도 뭐 어, 아무래도 세계는 그 높은 선수들이 항상 경쟁을 많이 구도로 많이 오다 보니까요 그런 선수들이 전체적으로 다 라이벌이지 않나 그런 생각이 듭니다. 언제나 도전한다는 생각으로 해요. 뭐 자리를 지킨다. 뭐더 높은 것을 얻으려고 한다는 생각보다는 항상 내가 가진 것들을 시합 때해 나가면서 나를 좀더그 뭐라고 해야 될까 좀더 나의 한계점을 계속 넘어간다는 그런 생각으로 많이 경기를 뛰거든요. 그래서 무언가를 지킨다기보다는 항상 도전하는 의미, 도전하는 자세로 경기를 임하기 때문에 어 이번 시합도 한층 더 성장된 내 모습으로 인해서 아 한층 더 성장된 내 모습을 위해서 어또 도전한다는 생각으로 경기에 임하겠습니다. 지난 도쿄 올림픽 그다음에 양크턴 세계 선수권 대회에서 보여줬듯이 한국 양궁은 항상 잘 하고 있고 앞으로도 잘해 나갈 거라고 생각이 듭니다. 어, 물론 많은 다른 나라 선수들도 유능하고 잘 하고 있지만 그 이상을 항상 발휘하는 한국 양궁이기 때문에 어, 누가 되든지 간에 항상 정상에 설수 있을 거라고 생각합니다. 
single-minded for sure, determined, that's um, in no question at all. But he, he does it with a huge amount of respect, Kim Woo Jin. Yeah, he does. I mean, he talked there about, in some ways, it doesn't matter who he's shooting against. You know, it's very much him the target and him attacking that target too. So, of course, lots of respect on the tour. But, yeah, it's how you mentally face these challenges. Yeah, uh, if you look at the lineup for for the the uh, semi-finals, Alvarino against Lee Kim's a, a teammate, and uh, Van der Ven against Kim Woo Jin, you probably fancy being on Kim's side of the draw, wouldn't you? Uh, yes and no. I mean, they're all fantastic competitors. I mean, Rick Van der Ven was fourth at London Olympics. Yeah. You know, okay, he just missed out on Tokyo, but he can certainly do it as well and he's here and he's back and he's ready to to make these matches so <laughs> it's such a hard one to call but being on home soil like he talked about there you know not having to battle jet lag and everything else so possibly the advantage i think being with the koreans yeah i, I kim woo jin is is a fascinating uh, archer he uh, he's in the final four here. I, I fancy him to make it into the final, and I think he will be facing his teammate there. Um, but uh, now it's time to delve deep into the analytical mind of Nikki Hunt as we go into her shot anatomy. So this time we're going to be looking at Ansan. San. She's only 21 years old, the world number one, and the Tokyo Olympic individual mixed team and team gold medalist certainly worth looking at her technique what i love about this technique the most is it's just so simple it's just raise that front arm draw straight back in and off it goes i think we often overcomplicate technique and this is a great one to look at straight into anchor and gone if you watch the arrow underneath the clicker as well, you can see even at full draw, she's always moving. There's a micro movement all the way through the shot. And that's so important. So you talked about the simplicity. Why, why, is that, why is that so crucial? Why does that make them so good? It's just nothing going on is there you know they just literally come into full draw straight back into the anchor point and off the arrow goes so archery is all about consistency so if you've got a very simple process then it's more repeatable it's more likely you're going to do exactly the same thing every time you you also talked about um recovery time for the other the other athlete is that does that play a part as well yeah it can do so we last time we spoke about sarah lopez and how quickly she shoots and forces the other athlete to have less recovery time i mean with the korean shot because the timing is so short they're at the full draw for such a short period of time they're going to need less recovery as well so that's a, a factor and do you see that that korean technique that we saw from ansan they're being mimicked elsewhere are there other arches where you can say oh no isn't that look but, but looks like a korean technique that yeah, there certainly are arches across the world. Um, it's just trying to make it as simple as possible. And I think a lot of people are trying to do that. There's obviously different techniques out there. Um, you know, Brady Ellison being probably the most different from that with mm. uh, the differences in his technique. But um, yeah, I think keeping it simple uh, is probably best under pressure. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, lots of Koreans. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about them throughout the whole weekend, of course. Compound Saturday first, coming up in well, just a few hours' time, uh, followed by Recurve Sunday. Someone who isn't here, though, is Bryony Pittman. She won out in Antalya, but the British archer hasn't travelled. Uh, but it does mean that we have got a chance to speak to her. Bryony, are you there? Hi, Bryony. I'm not sure that we can hear you just yet. Uh, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you. Bryony, um, look, first up, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Um, tell us why you're not in Korea. Um, unfortunately, I tested positive for COVID the day before, before we flew out. Um, so I wasn't able to travel, but I've had no symptoms or anything. Um, and I'm out of isolation now. So, yeah, it's all good. Well, sorry to hear that you haven't made it, but very glad that you're not suffering from any symptoms. Um, look, we're going to ask you uh, about your discipline only. We'll stick to your discipline only. We know who the final four are. Uh, let's start with uh, the women. Who's your favourite for the women's competition? 
Uh, for the women, I think I'd have to go with Troy Meeson. Obviously, it's been a few years since we've seen her on the international stage, but her results in the past, she's an absolutely phenomenal archer. Um, and the way she shot this week as well, she's um, yeah, she's dominated the competition. So it, it will be really interesting to see her competing on a final stage again. And uh, yeah, I think she's definitely a favourite. Yeah, she seems to be a favourite here in this studio as well. Nikki's picked a Troy as well. Uh, what about the men's competition then? I think for the men's, I'm going to have to go with Miguel Alvarino. Um, I think it will be awesome to see a European archer win on Korean soil. And especially after his performance in Antalya, winning that stage. And then, um, yeah, coming into this, shooting really well in the matches. He's not got that same pressure as well of having to, to win to make the final. So, yeah, it'll be really awesome to see him um, perform again. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually, not having any pressure on him. Uh, so it might uh, might be a bit easier for him. Uh, but do you think it's a controversial decision calling Alvarino? Because a lot of people were saying we'll never see him in a final again after Antalya. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely had results in the past. Obviously, it's... You know, it's still t a tough competition. It's a tough final four and he will have to shoot well to win it. Um, but yeah, like we've seen in Antalya, I think he's he's won the World Cup final before as well, hasn't he? So like, we have seen him p perform and he we've seen him win. So it's not that he can't do it. Um, yeah, there's, I think he's definitely got the potential there. He certainly has. He is in the four. Yeah. And Brian, you've already booked your ticket to that final. So how are you going to prepare from now until then? Uh, so we've got the European Championships coming up um, and I'm also hopefully going to the World Cup in Colombia. So again, that's just more match play, similar competitors, obviously at the same level. And then we've got our national tour finals as well at the end of the year, which will be a similar format to the World Cup final. So just having that um, preparation a few weeks before, being able to go into that, make sure um, my technique's OK, everything's working mentally. And then, you know, I've then got a few weeks, if anything's not quite right, just to, to fix it up and then get out there and enjoy it. You certainly do look like you're enjoying it. I mean, obviously, we're sorry that you haven't made it through to Korea. But I've got to ask, are you starting to feel the nerves already for the finals? Now that you've qualified, you've done it, or, or is, it, is, it, is it time to sit, down, sit back and relax? Um, I'm actually more relaxed about it at the moment. I think as we get closer to the time, I'll probably uh, get a bit excited, have a bit more adrenaline. But at the moment, I'm just, I'm so happy that I've done it. And, you know, my matches in Antalya, there were moments where it wasn't great. But the fact that I actually went there, I won, I took opportunities when I had them. And knowing that I can do that uh, gives me great confidence for the final, actually. And I don't see any reason why, if I go and shoot my best, I can't be on top of the podium, so. Well, Bryony, uh, we really appreciate you spending the time with us. So sorry to hear that you haven't been able to make it out to Korea, but we are very happy that you're not suffering from any of the symptoms. And we wish you luck for the European Championships, uh, Medellin, and of course, uh, the World Cup final. But uh, for now, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Uh, brilliant, Nikki. That uh, <clears throat> was lovely, wasn't it, to hear from a, a winner already this season. She's made it through. Um, you... Uh, you, we, we, we both talked about her after the, um, uh, the, the win in, in Antalya. She was f just a bag of nervous energy. She seems a little bit more calm today. <laughs> yeah, she will be now. I mean, when you come off that final stage full of that adrenaline, um, you know, she will be incredibly excited. I don't think it was in her expectations to go out there and no. win that stage. And she did incredibly well. But she's just got to now work on that pressure training. She talked about the competitions she's going to do. What sort of things going to simulate that pressure and train under those conditions? And uh, she talked about the European Championships and Medellin. That they're only a couple of weeks apart, aren't they? And uh, is that a difficult thing to manage, or is it thought about well in advance of the season? Uh, the season will all be planned out, so she'll know what competitions she's going to. There'll be strategies around jet lag and you know getting into different time zones. Really for that, I mean, Brian is hugely experienced. She's been on the tour for probably probably. 10 years nearly now um, you know she was hitting a real peak in 2019 and then we went into that hiatus and you know she's quickly now come back after that and uh, shown what she's made of yeah and you talked about that I think it's just worth just just go delving a little bit more into that because we've seen athletes across all sports um, who break through and then of course there's two year as you call it hiatus in, in sports competition 
Do you think she really is right back to where she was in 2019? I think she's better. Um, I think she was qualifying really well in 2019. She was showing lots of promise, but she didn't really get onto that, that you know, the, the podium. So she's actually got better now. Um, to go out and win your first World Cup, first uh, World Cup of the season, that's shown how much she has improved. Yeah. Uh, well, it'd be interesting to see how she does through the rest of the season. European Championships coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time, followed pretty soon afterwards by uh, the Hyundai Archery World Cup number three in Medellin, Colombia. But we are looking at the season ahead and it's time to make some predictions. Will Bryony Pittman feature amongst them? Um, no time to sit on the fence here, Nikki. Uh, I'll do mine first, right? So I'm going with Toya Ellison of Slovenia for the compound women's competition. She's in the best form of her life. Uh, silver medal in Yankton last year at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals. Uh, so I think she's going to go one better. Uh, Mike Schlosser for compound men. I just can't see anyone getting past him. <coughs> it, the only person that can beat Mike Schlosser, in my mind, is Mike Schlosser. <laughs> um, I'm go going left field uh, for the recurve women's. I've gone with Lisa Barbalan of France. She's, she's a superstar on, on stage. I think she's going to be one of the superstars of the sport. Uh, she shows a lot of passion and I think that's why I'm kind of drawn to her. But she did have a breakthrough season last year and she's now leading the French team since so, she's taken that responsibility in her stride. And for the recurve men, I've gone for a Korean uh, but perhaps not the one you're thinking of. I've gone for Lee Wu Shuk. Uh, I just think this is going to be his year. So, <laughs> Your turn. Not allowed to sit on the fence. Let's start with the compound women. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go out there and say Ella Gibson for the compound women. You know, she's really broken through this year. She's been training hard over a number of years now. She went full time as an archer. She's decided not to go to university. And I think she can make it all the way. Already booked her ticket from Antalya for those finals as well. In the men's, Mike Schlosser, I think, come on, who's going to beat Mr. Perfect? Exactly. I agree with you 100% there. So I think, you know, we don't often see a medal match without him. And then in the women recurve, I've gone for Choi. Um, I think, you know, she's got a chance of winning here, booking her ticket. She has already made two finals. She won a gold and a silver in those already. So can she add to that? And then, yeah, Korean men, I've gone slightly opposite to you <laughs> uh, for, the, for the recurve men. Kim Woo Jin already won the finals three times. Can he make his fourth as well? Got a good chance, but he's got to book his ticket. So uh, what we're going to say, one point for each correct prediction, glass of Rioja on it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Those are our predictions. Uh, and there's, sure, there's sure to be many, many more on the World Archery website and across social media, so make sure you have a look at uh, those channels. Um, well, that's about it from us uh, here in Guangzhou, Korea. Uh, we have a live coverage coming to you in just a few hours time. It's 3 a.m. Central European time for the first session on Compound Saturday, followed by the individual competitions, which will start at 7 a.m. Central European time. And hopefully, Nikki and I will still be awake then. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you for live tomorrow.